How should we value Mitch Garver now that he's signed with the Seattle Mariners? Find out next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. We got some catcher news. The Mariners signed Mitch Garver to a two-year, $24 million deal. And not sure he'll actually play much catcher, but he has catcher eligibility for fantasy. Obviously, the Mariners have Cal Raleigh and Sebi Savala as their uh, catcher tandem there as well. But I think an everyday DH role maybe kind of mixes in as like, you know, a second or third catcher on the Mariners here or there. Playing DH should actually help his value. I think he'll get more plate appearances than the average catcher. Garver, the problem is health. I mean, it's not a matter of like how good he is. When he's on the field, he's really good. I mean, mm -hmm. he hit 270, 19 homers in just 87 games this year. He has a career 825 OPS, 123 WRC+. plus. He just has not played more than 87 games since 2019. So uh, I like the skill set. It's just, can he stay on the field? Greg, what are your thoughts on uh, Mitch Garver to the Mariners? Yeah, I agree with you. And it was weird when I was looking up his numbers, he only hits like 217 when he's the DH. It's like he hits higher when he's a catcher. So, you know, some guys that's just, you know, as he gets used to it, hopefully he'll acclimate to that role and, and he can, and of course they've got Edgar Martinez up there. He can come in spring training and kind of talk him through some of that stuff, how to stay prepared. Um, yeah. You know, from where he's going and anytime you can get a catcher, a catcher eligible player, um, that's not going to be catching for the most part, then then you're thinking you're doing well. So I'm not sure how much this will drive up his ADP just because of all of the risk issues. But, you know, in that range where you were talking about in our show notes about where he's going to go, I mean, he's a pretty alluring option, especially if you're waiting at catcher, which a lot of people like to do. Yeah, the early ADP for Mitch Garver is 203.6, 17th catcher off the board. I think he'll climb up a little bit. We usually see once players sign, they kind of get a little bit of a boost. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was looking at like the 170 ish range where you see names like Bo Naylor, Jonah Heim, Logan O'Hoppy, Caber Ruiz. You think Mitch Garver deserves to be in that range or, or maybe even ahead of some of those names? No, I, I think that's a pretty fair place to get him. And, and again, now it's build, build thing. You know, if I'm looking to get, I, I do like O'Hoppy. So that would be a tough choice between the two of them. But, that's not a bad thing. Like if those two are in my queue and one of them goes, I can have the other as a fallback option. That's not a bad place uh, to probably grab your first catcher in that little, that little pocket you were referencing. And I think they could have similar skill sets too. Mm -hmm. Logan O'Hoppy and Mitch Garver middling batting average, maybe like a two fifty kind of guy and, and really good power from both mm -hmm. of those as well. The white Sox signed Martin Maldonado to a one year deal, which doesn't really matter for fantasy, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how their catcher situation works out. They also traded for Max Stassi. They traded for Corey Lee uh, during the season. So they do have some options here. I guess we'll find out which of those two winds up on, on the uh, active roster here on opening day. But again, Martin Maldonado to the White Sox. The Blue Jays have made some moves. They signed Kevin Kiermeyer to a one-year deal worth approximately $10 million dollars slated to be the starting center fielder once again for them. And they also signed Isaiah Kiner Falefa to a two year, $15 million deal. My guess is IKF super utility role, something mm -hmm. like that. They have uh Davis Schneider at second base for now, Kevin Biggio at third base. So not really anyone that's either proven or has been great the past couple of years. So maybe IKF works in a little bit. My guess, Greg is that the blue Jays are probably not done this off season. They they've got another, move up their sleeve here. Yeah, their fan base was pretty upset if this was it. Yeah, for sure. The Guardians acquired outfielder Esteban Florial from the Yankees in exchange for Cody Morris, so a swap of former top-ish prospects. I don't know that either of them was really a top prospect, but they were prospects, so uh, maybe it could work out for either one. Again, Florial to the Guardians, Cody Morris to the Yankees, and the latest on the rumor mill, the Dodgers, who have signed or traded for everybody this offseason, are interested in Teoscar Hernandez. So uh, could potentially be their uh, a corner outfielder because we know he's not going to DH. They have Shohei Otani. But if Teoscar wound up with the Dodgers, that would be a pretty big boon to his value. So we'll see if that actually winds up happening.